Your ministry has expanded, I mean, just extended over the decades. It's been pretty incredible to see just how God has used you and how many books that you've written. But let's get a little bit of your bio. Where'd you grow up? How'd you come to know Jesus? And what led you to become a historian? And I know I'm asking you to summarize yeah. several decades right there in just a few moments, which is hard for a historian to do. But no, that's not too hard, actually. Uh, that um, I... Uh, I, I grew up in, in Middletown, Pennsylvania, which is near Harrisburg. And uh, my father was a uh, had been the pastor there, and then he became a, an executive. He was a mission, when I was young, very young, he was a mission secretary for the Orthodox Presbyterian Church. And so I grew up in an Orthodox Presbyterian uh, situation. I also grew up in a in, in a, in a home that was very old and built in the in the 19th century and had been a family home for many generations. So, so I was surrounded by history, but the, the history uh, that I knew best was the, the, the history that had shaped the Orthodox Presbyterians leaving uh, the main Presbyterian church. And so that was part of my uh, atmosphere when I was growing up and I was we had a Christian school and that was emphasized as constantly uh, an, an issue in, in, in sermon. So uh, I was intrigued by that. I was gripped by it. I, I, I think I, I had uh, essential faith or commitment uh, as I was as I was growing up, but but I also had a lot of questions and and, and I went to a secular, um, a secular college, Haverford College in Pennsylvania, wonderful place. And so I was confronted by uh, the best of contemporary learning. And and then a big question in my life was, how do you put these two things together? Here, here is uh, classic Christianity that, that had been um, the, the, uh, uh, central in Western culture for a long time, Central in American culture for up to 100 years ago. And then now it's considered to be quaint, out of date, and and there's this whole other, uh, you know, at that time I thought very positive uh, sort of humanist outlook. And, and how do I fit those two things together? So that helped shape in my faith journey, I, I went to, to Westminster Seminary for a year to, to try to work that out. And that was very helpful. Uh, I, I learned from uh, Cornelius Van Til and uh, Edmund Clowney and a number of other wonderful uh, professors there. And and that gave me a grounding to, for a deeper faith. Uh, and uh, then I went on to graduate school because I was you know, in, on this quest to say, how does the culture and the faith, how do they interact with each other? And how does the faith uh, be shaped by the culture? What's essential and what's peripheral? And um, in the course of that, I, I ran into uh, reading Jonathan Edwards, who was actually uh, revered in, in uh, Maine, American his, history at that at time as sort of the greatest Amer uh, early American thinker, and I you know and I thought wow this stuff is great in in kind of illuminating the reform tradition that I was uh, that I was part of so that became one of my anchors in in my faith commitment but uh, my professional work was still going trying to understand uh, where did the way the church is today, today then being in the 1960s, how did it get that way? And at that time, uh, conservative churches were, were still see, seen to be as fundamentalist and, and, and outdated by, by most people in the culture. And so I took on the, the task of how do you understand where fundamentalism came from? What is it? How did it get shaped? What's it doing now? How did it? How has it gotten changed since then? I wrote about fundamentalism, and I wrote about the um, 
the neo-evangelical movement and at Fuller Theological Seminary. Uh, and that was a major agenda, trying to understand that tradition. And then I went on to um, try to understand the other culture that I was part of, the academic culture, and where does Christianity fit in academic culture? And, and I, I wrote about uh, a book called The Soul of the American University, how Christianity interacted with university education in America, and also uh, a book called A Righteous Idea of Christian Scholarship said, Christian scholarship isn't isn't that outrageous. It's just it, it can be as academically uh, solid as any other kind of scholarship, and it, it ought to be welcomed into the academy rather than uh, simply being uh, suspect. Uh, so those are the main uh, things I've, I've thought about. And then I, I, after after the, the, that, I got into Jonathan Edwards and written a good bit about about him and as I mentioned uh, I did a book on C.S. Lewis uh, so it's it's all in, in along that uh, trajectory of trying to see what are the eternal truths that you can find in a very transitory cultural situation and we are very limited sorts of people so so we have to we have to be very careful what we uh what we take is absolute, and and um, but but nonetheless, uh, there's enough there to make a real a real faith commitment. 